Connect to the World of Him broadcast. This is your one and only Bishop Jerome A. Taylor, all the way from the beautiful town of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. I thank you so much this morning for tuning in. I know we always say this, this is the day because this is the day the Lord made, not the devil, but the Lord made this day. And so we choose, we make a, a conscious choice to choose to rejoice, to be glad therein. Could you just give God a little bit of praise right where you are this morning, thanking him for life, thanking him for strength. Come on, thanking him for help, thanking him for his goodness, protecting you throughout the week, protecting your family. Come on, for to and fro as you've traveled those highways, those byways, kept you safe on the highways. Come on, woke you up every morning. Come on, nobody had that gunpoint in the bed, broken your house. That's a blessing, you know what I mean? That he protected you throughout the night. And you mean some of you got food in your cabinet, some of you got water to drink, to take a bath, to do all the things you need to do. Water. That's a blessing. You may think it's small, but that's a blessing to be, just to be out of the elements. Some of you got a home. It may not be all you want it to be, but it's a home, praise God. You're not in the elements. So we always take opportunity to, to thank God for the things that he has blessed us with. And yet I know that he's yet doing great things, and he's getting ready to give some of you more blessings, and he's entrusting you with more things and bigger things, and that's a blessing too. But let's praise him for the things that we have. Come on, let's show him our gratitude for the car. Come on, for the home, for the food in the cabinets. Come on, y'all. Come on, let's show him gratitude for that job. It ain't the job you want, but it's still bringing income in. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might not be the car you want, but it's transportation. Praise God. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a believer that if you take care of, you know, if you take care of what God has given you, that he'll always increase you with more. Uh, God will increase you with more because more is always on his mind. Praise God. I believe that God's always trying to get us to, to bear fruit in every area of our lives. And it's the will of God for you to have wonderful things. And I'm excited about your future. I know this pandemic is still in the atmosphere. There's a lot going on. Thank you all again for wearing your mask, for being safe. Uh, we are praying uh, for the country, We're praying for our president. Uh, this stuff is real. You know what I mean? This, this uh, COVID-19 is real. And, uh, and so we definitely want you to be safe, your family safe, your children safe, everyone around you to be safe. Praise God. This uh, COVID-19 does not have any prejudice. It is a, it is a virus. It's hidden people, period, period. It doesn't have any, doesn't have any it's not, it's not uh, colorblind. It's hidden anybody that's, uh, that, that comes in this path. So we definitely, uh, definitely want you to be safe in your family. So look, you know what I already do. You know what I'm getting ready to ask you to do. Hit the share button. Yes, we're about to blow some fuses. I hope you had a good time last week. We're about to go in. I mean, this morning, we're about to go in. I'm going to talk about some of the 21 years that we've been here in Monk's Corner. We're going to talk about the 26 reasons why you need to read the Word, but I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about being a servant. You know, it's been so important that God wants us to be servants. Amen. Some of you don't know how to serve, and that's the problem with your promotion, why God can't take it to the next level. Come on now. You got to learn to be a servant. Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Praise God. And I want you to know that we're excited about the many things that's going on here in our beautiful town of Monk's Corner. Uh, you know, my, my Hymn Church members, thank you all, Hymn Church Forever. Thank you all for being connected to the Hymn Church for the 21 years. Some of you have been riding with me between 1 to 21 years of our time here in the beautiful town of Monk's Corner. I'm going to just hit a little bit about that because I'm grateful that God has put us in the city for 21 years to make a difference in the lives of God's people. 21 years. Can you believe we've been here for 21 years? Man, those are, those are numbers of retirement. We ain't retiring no time soon. We ain't finished yet, but we still got work to do. So I'm excited about the 21-year presence that God has placed us here in this community. It is a blessing uh, to have served the people. I want uh, a special shout-out to all my Hymn Church members, all my Hymn Church leaders, our staff. We have the best church in the whole world. If you're not a part of the Hymn Church, Nothing personal, but I'm, I'm giving this specifically to my Hymn Church members, those that are supported, and then those that are just partnering with us. We appreciate you too. But my Hymn Church members, y'all are the best, the best ever. I'm telling you, I am so godly proud, amen, to be your pastor, your senior leader here at this beautiful church because it's been a blessing serving you, and it's been a blessing serving your families. You know, we hadn't always done everything right, Miss Janie. We've missed things at times as leaders, but I promise you for the most part, most of you that know your bishop, 
You know my heart. I love you, and I'm always going to show love towards your family. I pray that this church has impacted your life where your life is different, that you can take an honest look at your life and say, I am the better because I met that church. I met that man of God. I met that place 21 years ago or whenever I met it, five years ago, two years ago, 10 years ago. Come on, we all have numbers in my hymn church family members. I want you to take a, an assessment of your life and begin to praise God because you know what? I look at my life in regards to my bishop, my archbishop, Bishop Leonard Love. Again, salute to my man of God and Bishop Carolyn Love and also the arch, uh, Archbishop Leonard Love, Bishop Carolyn Love, and also to my mentor, Dr. Vernon. When I met these men and women of God, also Lady Vernon, when I met them as Janie, I, I, 26, 27 years ago, my archbishop, my life began to change. Amen. My life began to change. I began to see my, my economics change. My finance began to change. I started to change as a husband. I was very, uh, uh, real new uh, to be married to y'all's pastor, the, the co-pastor, the pretty little lady. And uh, so I didn't know, you know, all there was to be a husband. So I was, I was kind of, you know, feeling my way. Young, uh, one year of marriage, and, and we was heading towards the divorce court because I didn't know. You know, I was messing up really bad. I wasn't messing around. I just didn't know how to be a husband because it was really, you know, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't taught how to be a husband. You know what I mean? Just brand new, 22 years of age, just in, in the Marine, you know, guy of the Marines was still just finding my way in life, but did not know. Amen. But so he served as a spiritual father, took me on his wings, taught me how to be a man, taught me, come on, how to be a good husband because he was a good, I met him on 20 plus years of marriage when I met him 26 years ago. So they were already had a foundation in their marriage. They were already doing things that I need to know as a young man. Come on, man, because that's sometimes, sometimes we don't, we don't do better because we don't know, we don't know better. So you know, you've heard the term, if you know better, you should do better. And some of you, unfortunately, some of my spiritual sons have been following me any length of time. You know, I don't know if you following me or you following somebody else because, you know, some of y'all don't act like your daddy. Praise God. I'm saying some of you, some of you don't act like me with your wives now. Your wife, I'm saying some of you don't act like the way I would treat your mama, your spiritual mama when she was alive. Yeah. So that, that, that brings up another question. You either sitting hearing me or you, you sitting and listening, but you're not doing. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. So that, 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 that's another thing because sometimes you could be sitting here in the church and not be here. Yeah. And uh, that means that I've, over the years that we've had a chance to pour into you. Now, you, you know, the Bible says don't just be a hearer only of the word but be a doer. So you got to, you got to, when you sit in this sanctuary as a, as a son, as a spiritual daughter, this is a lesson, man. You got to sit here, get it, and then make it applicable, which, which means put it into application because it's not going to sit, it's not going to do your life any good if you're sitting here me, but you're not doing it. If you're going home still being mean, ugly to your wife, you know, my, I'm talking about my men right now. If you're being, you know, you're not being a king in your family, making sure that that wife is secure, making sure that, you know, that she's like feeling like she got the best husband in the whole world because you've gleaned from your spiritual father. That's what I did. I, I watched Bishop, my Archbishop. I watched his life. I watched how he treated Dr. Carolyn, Bishop Carolyn Love. I watched how he was tender with her, how he took up time, how he was still dating her, how he admonished her, how he adored her. And I had to step my game up. Praise God. You know how y'all see me kiss Pastor T in the pulpit before she uh, transitioned? I learned all that from him. I said, man, if this, if this man is my spiritual dad, I want to I act like him. I want to be like him. I want to I take on the principles, not be like him, be him, you know, but just take on the principles. If he's doing, if he's kissing his wife and loving his wife, then I need to be kissing and loving my wife. If he's treating his wife good, taking her out to dinner and complaining, I need to be taking mine out. So I said, Lord, Lord bless me some extra money. And I want not pass like, every time I take out the dinner, I'm all mad. I said, honey, let's go out to dinner. I had some extra money. I want to take her out. Where you want to go, baby? Where you want to go? She's like, really? I said, like, yeah, where you want to go? My bishop did that to his wife. You know, I don't want to take, where you want to go? You want to go out, man? We got bills. I said, no, I got, I got to get better than that. Because I don't want this lady to have a bad life because she feel like I, I'm not a good husband. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to go off. Hit the share button, everybody. No, I'm, I'm telling you all, because I'm sharing all this because, you know, these are the impact that my bishop made for me to serve this community, for me to be a better servant. And so you got to have somebody in your life that, that's gonna, that you're going to listen to. You know, it's like... Who, who, who will you listen to if they call you? And, and, who, you know, and I had to define this. My bishop is one of those men that if he called me, I'm going to make the mid-course correction. My, 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 my bishop mom, if she called me, I'm going to listen. You know what I mean? I have those people in my life. I have Dr. Vernon. If he called him and Lady Vernon and say, you know, son, whatever, you know, I, uh, I feel you need to go left or right, I'm going to listen to those dudes. And, and, you know, I'm going to listen to my spiritual dad and my mentor. You need to have somebody in your life that you're going to listen to. Don't follow somebody you're not going to. Don't waste people's time if you ain't going to listen to what they say. Boy, I feel like running right there. Yeah. Hit the share button. Now, I'm about to go off. Come on, don't, don't mess with that dial. Don't, don't mess with that, 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 that technical device, that Android or the Apple. No matter which one. I'm going off on Apple fans and Android fans. No, you matter. 
But, but listen, listen, I'm saying don't follow somebody if you ain't going to listen to them. You know, if you got somebody you call your spiritual dad or spiritual mom or whatever, and they give you advice, they give you, you know, a lot of times, like us naturally, I don't, I didn't always like what my dad had to say, my natural daddy, James Taylor, if he's watching, I love you, sir. I uh, need to call you, appreciate you, man, love you. And, uh, but, uh, but I didn't always like what he had to say to me. I didn't like everything Queen Esther had to say to me, that's my mom. But kind of how me know, they're my parents. And parents ain't, some parents ain't studying what you're feeling. Because they're the parents. Some of you parents, let me share this just a little, uh, uh, let me digress real quickly to the side, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, take, a little, take, a little, take a little rabbit chase right here. Some of you parents are too concerned about being your children's friend. And when you're concerned about being their friend, you're going to lose them. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna lose, they're going to lose respect for you because you're trying to be too buddy with them. You want to be in with the in crowd. They ain't going to like what you say. You know, I used to be the, the jolly green giant in my house. My wife, I already knew my kid ain't going to like me. I know, you know, past he was, she had a good relationship with the girls, but I already know if, if, if any bad news is going to come, it's going to come from daddy. I already knew that. So I ain't trying to be on Facebook, be their friends, if they like me today. No, I've got to be the daddy right now. And all the information I'm about to give you ain't cute. It don't feel good. I don't even like sanity, but I got to say it because I want to be a good parent. I know that this information is probably going to be more valuable to you in days to come than it is right now. Because sometimes we don't like hearing information. Some of you don't like making changes. Some of you don't like listening to people. And you can't listen and be great if you don't want to listen. You can't be great in life if you don't listen to somebody. Come on, y'all, hit the share button. Yeah, you're not going to be great if you don't learn to listen to somebody. You don't have all the answers. Tell me how that's working for you. Tell me how you listening to yourself is working for you. You got to listen to somebody. Somebody know better than you. Oh, I'm a man. No, you ain't no man. I'm a man, you a man in a mess. <laughs> you a woman in a mess. I'm a man. No, A's don't make you a man. Ma'am, A's don't make you. You got the age of grown, but you don't have the actions of grown. Because grown people handle their business, and grown people, mature people. See, Jesus say, I came to serve, not to be served. Well, I came to serve, I came to, I came to serve, not to be served. That's what he said in the scripture. And so the Bible talks about uh, if you want to be great, then you got to learn to be chiefest of all. Some of you know how to serve. That's what we've been in this community. 21 years serving God's people. I've learned how to be a servant. I love serving God's I really do. And you'll never hear me. My, my, my sons and daughters know me. I don't float my title. I don't, I, don't, I don't wear my title. I don't bash people with my title. They call me Jerome Taylor, whatever. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not a title-driven guy. I know who I am. Yeah. Glory be to God. I do. I know who I am. I know what God has assigned me to do. But my point is, some of you understand your bishop's humility. I am a very humble man, and that's the way you go up. You be humble, you let God do the things he wants to do in your life. But I need my men that are watching on, because I just want to share it about you, you know, learning, gleaning from us, pulling. Come on, for the 21 years that we've been together, I need your life. As you look at it, I want it to be better. And I want your wife to say, my, my husband is a better man. I want the women of this church to have been better because Dr. T poured into them. Amen? Uh, not just sit and listen, but that your life has gotten better at some aspect. I'm a better person. I don't get mad as quick. I, you know, I've learned to love people. Some of you are not lovers of people. I pray that being around us, you've learned to love people a little bit more. Because anybody know us, we love people. Praise God. We love people no matter what they're going through, no matter what they did, no matter what they, we love some people. Some of you say, well, I can't see how y'all do it, but you're not me. Praise God. <laughs> you know, and you don't have my heart. That's okay. I got God's heart, and I'm going to love God's people no matter what. I give people a chance because everybody deserves a chance. Everybody deserves, no matter what, how ratchet they are. Let me say it again. No matter how ratchet people are, they deserve a chance. And I'm going to always give people a chance. You know why? Because God gave the boy here a chance. Come on. Come on. On the east side of Jacksonville, nobody would have picked me to be their pastor. Come on. But God gave me a chance. Come on. And he didn't judge me for my mistakes. He didn't, he didn't look at me cross-eyed because of where I grew up at. And he didn't look at me cross-eyed for what I didn't have. Come on. He didn't look at me cross-eyed because I didn't know how to talk. I didn't know how to put all my verbs and nouns together. Come on now. I was a perfect dude coming up. Dr. T taught me a whole My wife taught me a whole lot. I'm I met her. Girl taught me a whole lot. I mean, I knew stuff, but she taught me a whole lot. And I started learning from her. And then I started taking off, and she started learning from me. But it's okay. You need to always connect with somebody who's going to be an answer to you, not a problem to you. Amen. You're always going to connect with somebody that's going to help boost your life to the next level. See, marry up, don't marry down. I'm just saying, connect with somebody, and even your husband wives right now, glean from each other. So I, I've learned to listen to my wife. I don't know why I'm on this marriage piece. I learned in 20, uh, 30 years we were together, I listened to that girl. Her value to me is that I learned to listen. I listened to her because her words were important to me. See, I'm not going to go and listen to 20 other people and not listen to what she had to say. Uh, 20 other people opinion don't matter to me. What my wife said matters. 
I'm just saying because she's the most valuable tool or, or, or my team player. You understand what I'm saying? So I knew she ain't going to tell me anything to harm me or to hurt me. Praise God. Some of you men, oh, yeah, my wife, she, I, 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 man, come on, she, that woman loves you. She cares about you. She is the best partner that you probably going to have, and especially a good woman that got your back. You don't want to mess that up. Come on, y'all, hit the share button. I'm just talking, I'm talking to my brothers right now. And women, y'all, I'm just talking to my men. I don't know why I'm talking to my women. I'm just going right. to talk to my men. Man, look here. Love your wife. Yeah. Respect that woman. And learn to listen to her. Especially my son. Talk to my son specifically. That's watch me love your spiritual mama. Mm-hmm. Dr. T was happy for real. I ain't saying I'm all of that. But the woman, when y'all see that big old smile on her face? Yes, it, it, she was smiling before I met her. But guess I put another a piece of that smile on her face. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, because she really, she, I, I treated her good. I really did. I, I did that intentionally because I wanted her to have good life. I didn't want Mother Bias to, 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 to be concerned about her daughter that was married to an animal. You know what I mean? He's married to a gorilla you know, or somebody who, who, who really was one way in the public, and then behind the closed doors, you treated her like crap. You understand? No, I'm not that dude. I wanted somebody's life to be better because my presence is there. You see, you used to always want people's lives. That's what I'm talking about, the 21 years we've been here in the community. I ain't patting ourselves. I want this community to have been better because of the presence of HHIM Church. Because you've gleaned from me. I gleaned from my spiritual dad. Come on. And my mentor. Y'all gleaned from me. We all glean right, from one another. And then we make our community better. People need to say, that church over there, that's something special over there. Amen. And the members need to reflect. Come on, the leadership. Yes, you should never look. You should, you should always look like your leader in your actions. Yes, and that's why some people don't know some of y'all go to heart to heart. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, your, 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 your actions should always reflect your leadership. And some of you don't act like me. You really don't. Not in principle. I, don't, I mean, I don't know who you listen to, really. Uh, I'm just saying. You know, if you follow me, then you'll be doing a lot of stuff. I'm not saying be me. Be your own individual. But I'm talking about in principles, you should at least be doing what I'm doing. You shouldn't be cussing people out. You probably never heard me cuss nobody out, treat people bad. You got to learn that stuff. It's, it's a learned behavior. And, and I'm saying specifically to my sons and daughters who've been sitting up under me for any length of time, your actions should always reflect that of a man of God. If you are listening to me, especially my sons and daughters, also in ministry, if you connected to me, you should be smelling, looking something like me. I mean, I'm saying, in principle, now I'm not saying literally, but in principle, you should be, be looking, uh, actions, something similar should be going on because you're gleaning and learning. That's what the Bible talks about, uh, 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 talks about this. It talks about uh, men uh, how following others. You know, the whole thing with Jesus is like, follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. Right. If the man is following Christ, then he's going to smell, look like Christ. Right. Then if you're following him, because guess what? The truth of the matter is, Moses is going to need a Joshua. Joshua is going to need a Moses. Get over it. Elijah is going to need an Elisha, and Elisha is going to need Elijah. Get over it. Jesus is going to need 12 disciples, and 12 disciples are going to need Jesus. Get over it. It's the order of God. You're going to have to follow somebody or follow your own way and go to hell. You feel what I'm saying? It doesn't take nothing from my man. I'm not, I'm not less than a man because I'm following men. That's the order of God. Follow them as they follow Christ. We all got to follow somebody. Praise God. But some of your problems, you don't want to fall low. See, you don't want to follow because you don't want to fall low. You want to do your own thing. And as long as you're doing your own thing, tell me how that's working for you. <laughs> it's never going to work out. It's never, it's never going to benefit your life to the degree where it should bless your life. Amen? Because the order of God is that we follow men. Not just anybody, but we follow men of integrity. We follow men of character. Come on, follow, uh, you know, we follow people that understand the things of the kingdom of God. Not that they're perfect people, but my point is we are designed by Scripture from Genesis the revelations to follow Christ, to follow godly men and women. Come on, that's the path. Come on, y'all, hit the share button real quick. I'm just talking, blowing some fuse with this because some of you don't have submitted lives. Your lives are not submitted to the kingdom. It's not submitted to another man. That's your problem. you like, you got this thing which you're like, I'm not following nobody. Well, keep doing it. Follow yourself. Right into a ditch. Right into a hole. And you always have a miserable life. Praise God. I want a beautiful life. I don't know about you. I want a life where God is constantly raining blessings. He's constantly making me look good. Praise God. Constantly doing things in our lives. I want that life right there. I, I don't want a hard life. The Bible says that the way of a transgressor is hard. I don't want a hard life. I don't want hard lessons. I'm going to do what he tells me to do because I know if I do what he tells me to do, Minister James and Minister Judy and, and, and Minister Rucker, I'm going to be blessed. If I follow the scriptures and do what he tells me to do, and following is a pattern of the kingdom, you got to follow Follow Christ. Come on now. Follow the, the scripture. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's a, that's a principle. That's a, 
universal biblical principle. Some of you just don't like following people. Now, I'm, I'm not telling you follow people that's raggedy. You need to connect with somebody who got your answer, a leader that is credible that you feel that you can follow. Amen. That's why the presence of us 21 years in this community, I've not had no scandal by the grace of God. Come on, I've not, come on, I have not touched any other woman by the grace of God. Come on now. I have not touched, come on, children. Come on, I don't mess with children. I'm not a pedophile. Come on now. I ain't, I ain't messing with other men. Come on, by the grace of God, I don't have no tendencies. Don't want to be with no man. Want to be with anybody inappropriate. I, I only wanted Dr. Tanya Aiken Taylor. That's all I wanted. Come on, because I wanted my marriage to shine because there was enough pitiful marriages. Come on. Yeah. Amen. There was enough pitiful marriages. I'm not putting nobody down. There was enough people that were not exemplifying true men of God. Because, you know, it's a, it's a sad thing when all the men of God are categorized in the same boat. Yeah. You know, one of us messed up that they, they were everybody in the same boat. Yeah. Well, I just chose to be a man that will follow my leader, Archbishop Little Love, that will watch his example, come on, to love his wife and to be the husband of a one wife. Come on now. And the, she wanted to be the wife of one husband. Come on. No boyfriends, no girlfriends. Come on. No special effects, no camera tricks. We wanted to do God's will, and we wanted to represent the kingdom well. We wanted to be those people, and I still want to be that man, even as a single man. Come on now. I ain't in everybody's bed but my own. Praise God. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. As a single man, 12 months, still in my own bed. Glory be to God. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, hit the share button, man. Don't be mad. Hit the share button. I'm just saying. Bishop ain't in everybody's bed. I ain't in, 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 the, in the topless clubs. That's right. That's right. Come on now. <laughs> I, ain't in, I ain't in the joints. <laughs> you know, amen. Praise God. Amen. I ain't in the topless places and all that foolishness and where, they, where they lap dance and all this foolishness. I ain't making it rain with $2 or $1. Come on. Right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bishop ain't, ain't about that life because... What I live, I mean it. Come on now. I, I, I preach what I live. I live what I preach. Come on now. Come on. Even in my singleness, they'll give me a right to go out and do wrong because Dr. T is not here. I'm holding my course. Come on. To my new boo come. To my new queen come at the appointed time. I'm just saying. Praise God. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button. Don't get off the line. I'm, I'm about to blow some. I ain't started yet. We about to blow some fuses. I'm just saying, man, because we see righteousness has to be the order of the day. Righteousness has to be what we do. I want God's blessings to reign on your lives, your family. I want God's blessings. Come on, the reign in that home where that man is doing right by that woman. Come on now, where that wife is doing right by that husband, where them children are doing right by those parents. We stand up for righteousness. Glory to God. We are people that live the scripture. Come on. We are, come on, the light of the world. No, this little light, no, it's not a little light. It's a big light. Praise God. Because guess what, Miss Jane? All the lights around this room, if you light a bit, whatever kind of light you have, come on, if you flick my bit, that light going to be big. You know why? Because everybody going to follow that little bit because somebody told you wrong. This little light you can't find in the Bible. There's nothing little about my light, nothing little about your light. That's something the world put on us because they want to know. They want you to always be dumbed down. This little light of mine, we're going to let it shine. No, if your light shining, baby, it's big because it came from God. It's not your light because you don't put light on yourself. The light represents the anointing, the glory of God. Ain't nothing light, nothing little. Come on. Nothing small. Come on. Nothing micro about the glory. It's always big. And that's why when he put it on you, come on, it's going to shine bright. You don't put a candle under the bed. You put that sucker on the dresser. You put that sucker in the room where it illuminates the whole room. That light is not small. It's big. Glory be to you. Come on, hit the share button real quick. I'm just saying, man. I, I'm telling you, we, see, we let the world play us down with all this craziness, but God got something special on us to live right, to talk right. Some of you know your life has been the better being in church over these years. Come on now. Your life has been the better. You've learned the systems of economics of God, learning how to type. It's the world I'll tell you, you're stupid, you're dumb, giving God 10%. You're yeah. stupid. How are you going to sow into that man's life, that woman's life? But some of you know, some of you know by the grace of God that 10% and that seed offered has opened up opportunities you can't even explain to somebody that don't understand kingdom stuff, Miss Janie. You can't, you see the Bible says, you should never lay your pearls before swine. They just gonna trample, they have no understanding of value. You understand the kingdom way. There's a system of this world, there's a systems of our God. I'm gonna follow God's system. I'm going to do what the Bible tells me to do. Yeah. See, when you do your own thing, the Bible says there's a way that seems right. Uh, Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. One way open up ways for your demise. Yeah. I'm going to follow God. When you write a Bible, create a whole world, then I might follow you. But until then, I'm going to follow him. Praise God. He, wrote, he made a whole world and wrote the Bible and told us principles, and now I got to just allow my mind. See, that's why the Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that you should renew your mind daily to the Word. 
You got to understand because that mind needs to be renewed. Come on. It needs to be renewed. Be, be not conformed to the world, be you transformed by the renewal. This mind want to fight the will of God. This mind want to always, always analyze things. Well, how's that? This not, this not, this don't make sense. It don't make sense to come to church and sit down. It don't make church come sit and listen to a man for two hours. You ain't listen to a man, you listen to a man of God. You're not listening to a woman, you listen to a woman of God. You listen to a representative of God. Oh, why you got, it's football time. I ain't got time to go and sit and listen to nobody at church. I, 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 I do my own Bible study at home. Do your own thing. Because there's a lot of people this morning watching wish you could be in the house of God right now. You got it? No, you ain't got to come right now. And there's a day nobody got to go because we're going to be in heaven. I, told, I tell my people all the time, that you, you don't have to come to church. You ain't never got to come to church. But see, down right now, people are longing for the church. Yeah, see, the church is the answer. See, it's always been the answer. It's going to continue to be the answer. People are longing, come on, to be just in the house of the Lord one more time. And you hear pastors and preachers get up in the pulpit and say that kind of stuff like it's cliches. But somebody knew one day we might not be able to gather together. And that day is here. And God knows they say this pandemic may not leave the earth until a whole another year. So we may not even gather back and hope we may have to just do services by way of online. Now I need you to be mature and still get what you got to get. Sit in front of that TV like, it's at, like you at church. Come on and get what you need from us. No, Bishop ain't physically having meetings with nobody. He ain't physically meeting at church. Or not. We just do what we do here to make sure you get to still get a spiritual feeding that you need to nourish your spiritual life. Come on, that's by the goodness of, that's by the goodness and grace of God that we have some of our ministers still coming with their mask on, being safe so that you can get what you need. Come on now. Amen. Come on, that's a blessing. Come on. But my point is, how many times have we taken for granted not showing up? Mm. That's right. Come on now. How many times you took your man and woman of God for granted when they was here, Sunday in, Sunday out? You were nowhere to be found. You was home having a pity party. You was home feeling some kind of way. I don't like the way she looked at me on the other side of the church. I don't like the way they stayed in church for extra 20 minutes. You tripping on stupid stuff. You understand? Know you know what I mean? I don't like this. We, we, we just collected money to raise, build, and fund, whatever. I mean, you tripping on something that, that caused you to be shunned away. And you should never let the devil punk you because, you know, God knew one day this would happen. This was going to happen in 2020. Now, nobody can come to church. You know, I'm not saying some pastor having that church service. God bless them. I hear at your, as your leader of this great church, we have chosen, come on, to be on the, I'd rather be on the, side, the margin of error. And it is to be, I don't want to be, in other words, I don't want to put your life in jeopardy. I don't, want, I don't want to lose somebody at my hands because of COVID-19. Because they came to the church and 10 people caught COVID. You know, that would, that would do something to me. And then those 10 people end up dying or something. That would do something to me psychologically. Yeah. And let me share this because sometimes people talk about churches in the community and this, that, and what this church ain't, what this church ain't. And some of you members might be saying what our church ain't. One thing I can tell you that you got it right is that we paid this church off. Come on. In May. Uh, April 30th, actually, come on, of 2017. We paid this church off. One of the best decisions of the church's life that we got started, come on, when we did 1999, March of 14, 1999. But the best, the next best decision is the church family got together. We rallied behind the vision because God was pressing my wife and I to pay this. I told Pastor T when she was alive during that year, I said, honey, the Lord is pressing my heart, come on, to pay this church off. And we came to you all, y'all rallied behind that vision, and we got the job done by the grace of God. But now, we don't have to be pressured to come back to church. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. That's a hand clap him, church. We don't have to be pressured to come back to church. Right. Amen. To be impacted with COVID. I can leave you safe. Keep us safeguarded. Come on, we can still come by way of internet. Come on, by way of means of stream. So you can get the word of God, get the spiritual feeding you need, and still grow. Come on, and glow. Come on, and grow. Yeah. Grow, glow, and go. Uh, with this word that you're being fed. Come on, every Sunday, we're committed to do that. But I want you safe, and we don't have to be pressured to come to church to raise an offering to pay for a mortgage. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's, that's the pastors. Why are they going to church? That's their church. I don't pastor their church. God bless them. I'm not judging them. I'm just saying God have not told me as your leader for us to come back. And we don't have to be pressured to come back. Because your pastor ain't trying to raise the offering to pay for the mortgage. The mortgage is already paid off. I want to give you a hand clap. Come on, y'all. Yeah, just for doing that right. You got that right. Yeah. Yeah, we pressed and grind like we was always on a building, like we was always on something, some kind of project. Y'all remember that, y'all? 167, we was always on something. We was always on something, Jesus. We was always raising money for something around here, but we was talked about and misunderstood even in the community because people, when they would come here, they would tell y'all just about the money. We weren't about the money. We were trying to get something done quickly. Amen. Every time they came, and they probably came during the time we was giving, it's like, oh, boy, you know, people coming to each other, oh, they giving, they over there giving the money again. Like, well, God knew we had to collect the money because he didn't send us to a bank. He didn't send us to the local banks to do it because they didn't care nothing about the, uh, him, church. So he, he, guess what, pulled his people together who had collectively the resources to get the job done. And guess what, by the grace of God, you can say what you want to say about people 
people of God, these people of God at the Hemp Church pulled together and made, come on, paid off a million dollar loan. Come on, I don't care what nobody say. By the grace of Almighty God, paid that thing in full. And baby, we owe nobody nothing but to love them. That's all we owe people in this community but to love. We owe them nothing but to love them. Come on now. Hit the share button, y'all. I'm just talking because sometimes people got all this, this yap yap about what to say about churches. But I'm telling you, Hemp Church, I love y'all. Y'all did something right. We are a 21-year-old ministry. Yeah. And I'm not putting all the church down. There are ministries in the community that's 21 years old, 50 years old, 80 years old, 100 years old, and they still got mortgages. Yeah. I'm just saying, your young 20-year-old church at the time, and we turned 21 this year, so we paid the sucker off. We were less than 20 years old when we paid the church off. We was right at about, what, age 19 as a church or 18 or 19 years old as a church, and y'all pulled it off, made this thing a possibility for your church to be debt-free, to have nothing come on but, but, but God's grace on it, and for us to owe nobody nothing but to love them. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button real quick. We about to go off again on some stuff. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button real quick. Y'all know. I'm just saying, I'm going to give you some stuff. I'm going to give you some stuff. Let, let, me, let me give you one scripture, and we'll get into some of the points. I know we're already 29 minutes remaining, and we've just been, you know, been sharing. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button real quick. Let somebody know that Connected World of Him broadcast is on the air. Just talking, sharing about our presence of 21 years being here in this community. I thank you all for just your presence. I thank you for those that have attended, those that have come, those that are connected, those that have been past, even the past members. Thank you all for coming through. Thank you for what you did. I ain't mad at you. You're gone with your life. You're doing what you got to do. We ain't mad. We ain't preaching on you. We ain't talking about you. Guess what? See, big people talk about vision. Small people talk about people. We ain't got time to talk about you because we, we, we constantly working on what's next for us. You got it? And, uh, and then some of you, some of you, that's another story too. When you, um, when you leave churches, don't, don't, don't go bad mouthing that bad, that pastor or that that bishop or that apostle, whoever the case may be. Them people probably were good to your life. And then you sometimes members find an excuse to leave. You know, if you find if you're looking for something, you're gonna find it. You understand? Well, the bishop didn't call me back, or they made me mad across the church. You're old raggedy. Anyway, you, if you if you if you looking for something, you're gonna find it. I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm, I'm about to blow some view. Look here, <laughs> going go around. But look, if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. Come on now. Like, you perfect. Please. You, you, you know, but you want everybody to have compassion on you and mercy. But your life is as ragged as anything. And so you need to learn, just grow up. Some of you need to grow up. Some of you in the churches where you have to grow up. You know what I mean? I bet you're on that job. And I bet you everybody don't like you on that job, but you're going every day and clocking in. And somebody don't like you in the church, now you're ready to leave. Come on, man, get a life. Get a, yeah, girl, bye. Boy, boy bye. <laughs> girl, boy, bye. Look, learn to grow up and be mature. Don't let nobody push you away from your church. Right. Don't let nobody, come on, tell, don't let nobody push you away from the will of God. That's right. And that's what's happened to some of our members that have been here. You, you left for all kinds of reasons. Some, some people left because we was in the midst of the building fund. But you're like, they want to give. Obviously, you want to give. We still right. building. Right. We need more than just the church. We need more than just a building. Oh, you want to bet? Go stay up on the bridge for two weeks and come back and let me know how your family, you and your family get along. Tell me a house ain't important for your family to be out of the, be out of the, the, uh, the elements and stuff. See, people don't realize how important this to have a physical building was. We, did, we never worshiped this building. This building is one of the most, I think it's one of the most beautiful buildings, edifices in, in Monk's Corner, amen, around, around some, even parts of some countries, amen. I believe it. Come, come on, our church member did it right. I mean, by the grace of God. We ain't worshiping the building, but we understand, guess what? The, 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 this is called the assembly. We, we are the church. We understand that. But, but guess what? The assembly, the, 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 not assembly, the church needs an assembly. We need a place to meet, to gather. That's important because God talks about the word. He talks about the word. So we, we understood the importance of God blessing us. I hope they show a picture of this. With this entire campus, over 136,000 square feet of space, which was an old formula, formula, former, form, former, form, former piggly wiggly complex. Amen. Yeah, that, that the people of God rose up with the authority to one day think that they can own it. Boy, that's some boulders right there. Y'all hit the share button. Yeah, 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 yeah. For pastors that's dreaming and tripping on something, that a church, that a, that a, it wasn't a whole bunch of us at the time, I don't know, less than 100 of us, rose up one day and said, God wants us to have this whole complex. In the middle, excuse me, uh, let me back it up. In downtown Monk's Corner, South Carolina, in the heart of the city of downtown traditional Monk's Corner, Come on, that a, a, that a multi-millionaire built this facility for he and his family, but didn't know he was building it for men and women of God. Didn't know he was building it, come on, for him church to occupy one day. 
didn't know that a church was going to one day, that it was going to one day be a, a natural place where it fed people natural food, that it was going to convert and one day be a place where spiritual food will be coming up out of this camp in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all, hit the share button. I'm just saying. When God has a, has a plan, when he has a vision for your life and your family, what you're supposed to do and come into. But, I mean, it was just bold. And here we are today on this campus, come on, with everything about it paid in full. It is, it is it's just a testament to the grace and power of God. But it's also a testament of the people of God having one mind, one vision, come on, one thought that we can pull together as a, as a church family, as we've done on all the projects here in church. We pulled together as one and made everything happen. That's why I ain't worried about this parking lot. We pulled together as one people and made everything happen. Yeah. Come on, we never went to a bank. We never got bank loans. Come on, even with buying it, right. even with renovating it, and then with paying it off. We went through three stages, right. getting it, yep. renovating it, yeah. then paying it off, and never went to one bank. Y'all better hear what the bishop is saying. Come on, that's a hymn church testament of the power of God working through determined people, one mind, one thought, come on, one mission, that we all pull our resources together. See, I may not be nothing by myself, but me and you together, we're going to make some noise. Praise God. Yeah. And me, you, and somebody else, we're going to make even bigger noise. You understand me, Janie? Yeah. Some of you may not do so. Say, you know, I may not be all that by myself, but that's why the scripture says stuff like this, minister. One can put a thousand of flight. Yeah. Then what? Two can put ten. And then that increment is nine thousand. In between those numbers is nine thousand worth of damage. Yeah. See, every time we connect with a third person, that's nine more thousand. You do that, one can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand, three I think is right at eighteen or nineteen thousand, twenty-nine, and the numbers keep jumping. See, I may not be able to do a whole lot by myself, but if I can get somebody to believe in what God has called us to do, if I can get you to understand my vision, not my vision, but the vision of this church, twenty-one years ago, still the same today, connecting the heart of man to the heart of God. Same vision, Jane. They ain't changed. Come on, you know, come on to restore. Come on, come on. I mean, even, even, with, our, even with our vision, our mission, uh, with the St. Luke uh, uh, 4, 18, 19, got it? Also, uh, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the goal and the assignment of the church, got it? Come on, see, it, it never changed. God never changed his mind about why we were here. Our main purpose is to connect the heart of man to the heart of God. To restore and establish hopes, dreams, purpose, and relationships with people by demonstrating God's continual love, knowledge, wisdom, power, presence through the preaching, teaching of his word. That is our goal of what we're going to do. Restore and establish. When you come here, things going to be restored. Things going to get established. Come on now. Your hopes, your dreams, your purpose, your relationships going to get better. That's what's supposed to happen when you connect with this church because it's a part of our goals or what God has assigned. How is he going to do it? Through St. Luke 4.18? You know the deal. Come on, you know the deal of St. Luke 4.18. That's what he assigned us to do. I'm going to read it off to you so, so you understand. He assigned us because I wanted to say he gave us the same assignment he gave Jesus. St. Luke 4, 18, 19 says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the, the heal, to, to, heal, to heal, I'm sorry, to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight of the, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's what our, come on, that's what our uh, 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 assignment is. That's what I said. Come on, because God wants us to know. Brokenhearted people belong here. Come on. Come on now. Poor people belong here. Glory to God. Come on now. Come on. Blind people belong here. People that need cap, people that need deliverance belong here. Come on, y'all. Amen. People that need to be, their, their sight, spiritual sight need to be changing the scales of blindness to see light. Come on, to understand they have purpose in their lives. Belong here. Come on, to set at liberty. That means, to set at liberty, that means the favor of God is going to be on their life. People that were bruised, they're going to come here and get unbruised, get healed. Then the, God going to set liberty over them, favor. Come on. When stuff wasn't working, it's going to start working. When they was giving you no's, you're going to start getting yeses. Come on. You might come as a crackhead. Come on. But you may end up being a leader. Come on. But lead God's people getting stuff. Come on now. When some, that's why you got to understand when your life pre-heart to heart, then your life post-heart to heart. Why God has sent this church what your life has done, what God has done through this church for your life. What does your life look like now? Come on, because of being connected to a spiritual institution. The church, come on, is a spiritual institution. We're the church, but it really is a spiritual institution uh, given by the hands of Almighty God, the assembly place where we come to assemble. As I said, how important it is for us to come to hear the instructions, to be out of the elements. We don't have to be in the streets and, and, and being, you know, uh, we can, we, you know, in other words, nobody can run us off this campus and tell us, well, y'all been teaching for one hour and uh, 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 Mr. Bubba didn't want y'all off the campus. No, no, no. No, we can stay, we can stay on this campus 
24-7. We, 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 we can take our lawn chairs and put them on the lawn and, 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 and sit out there in the lawn chairs and look at the sky all night long, and nobody can bother us. That's a blessing. Nobody can say, yeah, well, y'all, y'all need to go home because it's too late. Mr. Bubba and them, Mr. Bubba and them said you need to get off his property. No, no, no. Newsflash, Mr. Bubba and them don't own this property. God's people own this property. Come on, GP, are you with me? Oh, yeah, we know the church ain't going nowhere. I'm just saying, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this God's people property. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 this God's people property. We did something on our coin, buy the people, for the, for the people, buy the people, something like that. I can't remember the slogan, but it was beautifully done because it was really the people did. God did this for the people. It's like God allowed us to do this. Come on, I can't remember what the, the, the slogan says on the coin, but it was powerful. God gave it to us. And I'm telling you, man, we have to understand the power of God and why he sent us here, why he set us. Come on, in the heart. Come on, bring it up here. The, the, the coin says something very special on the back of it, and uh, we're going to read it off real quick. Come on, y'all, hit the share button real quick. Man, I can't believe we got 19 minutes ago. We did a coin. Come on for the church. Uh, and him, church member, if you don't have this coin, come on, hit me at the bottom of this. Uh, yeah, hit us up at the bottom. Let us know, Bishop, I need the coin. Hit somebody up. Hit, some, hit, the, hit, the, hit, the web, hit something up. <laughs> let us know you need your coin. If you remember, you, we owe you a coin. Amen? They're free. They're not for charge. So uh, here on the church coin has paid in full. It says uh, financed by the people for the people. Amen? Amen? Financed by the people for the people. Glory be to God. And this coin is beautiful. It has the church date on it. I thought it was 2018. That's what I thought, y'all. It, was, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't 2018. It was 2018. That's right. Seven. I'm sorry. I'm looking at it right here. It says uh, paid in full. It was uh, uh, paid for on the 5th, was, uh, which is May 18th, 2017. It was. Thank you, man. And so 2017, we paid this church off. Uh, uh, actually, actually, y'all, it was April 30th. If y'all remember in service that we raised all the money, but we physically did the, we physically did the, uh, the, the ceremony on 5, uh, let me read it again, 18, 2017, where we did the ceremony. And I am so godly proud of this. It has the paid in full. Yeah, buddy. That, that was a proud, godly proud moment. And it has the date that the church was established, which was March the 14th, 1999, when God sent my wife and I here. Come on, didn't care nothing about the fact we was in Florida. I was from Florida, Florida boy. He said, get your tail amongst corner of South Carolina. I told you last week, me still the people twos had to take it back and all that. You remember that, anyway, don't worry about it. Y'all remember that time the last broadcast? Same job, God shut down. I feel like I was Jonah, but he sent me here, come on, 1999, to start this work, my wife and I, and I'm so excited again. 21 years later, our whole campus is paid off, paid in full, come on, May 18, 2017, it happened. I mean, y'all remember her days, the Heart to Heart Him Church family, remember the days we came here, it was dust, it was like it was never going to happen. Y'all remember how many times we raised money? Sunday in, Sunday out, y'all remember the days, the sacrifice, come on, y'all, come on, hit the share button. You remember the days on Tuesdays when we was raising money? Sundays again, big, big giving. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? 167. Y'all remember how much you give it? 167. And then the last one we did for the payoff was like one, 100 and one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we done been through some numbers, y'all. Hit the share button. Hit the share button. Come on, what you give it? One, two, three, four, five, six. That was $1,234.56. We was trying to pay the church off. It was funny. God just gave those numbers just failed like that. How much you paying? One, two, three, four, five, six. It was crazy, y'all. Man, we have been through a lot, but I'm, I'm so excited, again, that God has shown himself in a real big way. And this is what I want my Him Church family members to know, and even those that have sown to HHIM Church. If you give it a dime, a nickel, a quarter, whatever, guess what? We appreciate it. We really do. Come on. Yeah, give me a hand clap. You are just a part of, you are just as much a part of this family, matter of fact, as anybody. Matter of fact, I'm going to be nice. Yeah, I'm going to be nice. I'm ready to say, uh-uh. See, this is, your, the, this is your daddy's heart. For anybody that's sown any amount, I'm going to be nice because this is what we do. This is what nice people do. And it's, 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 it's really nice. If you're not, if you're a partner with us, if you partner with, if you're already sown and you're sowing, you're giving the tithe. Some of you are not even members, you tithe and the giving. Reach out for a coin. Let, let us bless you with a, let us bless you with a coin. We can do that. Come on, come on. Hit, hit, we can do that. No, we can do that. Hit us up at the bottom and say, Bishop, I've been sowing to the church, been sowing online. And, and I'm not a member, but, you know, and if you are a member, if you haven't gotten it, get it, and if you've been sowing to support us, let us send out a coin. We, we, we that nice. That's, come on, heart to heart. We that nice. Let us, <laughs> let us bless you with a coin, all right? It'll bless you. It's it, it just something about this coin. It's like, ah, 
but it has the favor of God on it and all that good stuff. I'm returning back to Ms. Minister Judy. I need to be having mine in my wallet. I appreciate them having that coin. She, she was able to pull it out. I appreciate that. But let, hit us up and let us bless you with that coin just to say thank you. Look, y'all, man, 15 minutes left. Let me at least give you a scripture or something. You know what I mean? I know we've been talking. We gave you a couple of scripts, but I want to give you something about uh, 26 reasons why you need to read the word. Again, my men, serve your wives, serve, keep learning, gleaning from me, pull from your bishop. I'm going to keep being the best bishop that I can never be. See, 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 life, when life comes at you fast, you know, when you feel like Calgon, you want to get away, all right? <laughs> well, Calgon, take me away, and you want to be like Airways, or Air, what do you call it, uh, United Airlines, I don't know what's, what, United, and I want to get away. Life should never cause you to be bitter. See, there's only one letter difference between bitter and better. But I made a decision in my mind, no matter what, because, of course, you know, Mr. McQueen and all that, I'm never going to allow life to make me be bitter. I'm going to always take the chance and the opportunity to be better at everything I do. You know what I mean? Even producing these books and getting these CDs, it was something that was on the agenda. I want to get better. I want to always add good vibes to their, I always want God to know he can trust me. See, I don't want to be this man that as long as things going good, you happy. Hit the share button. As long as everything going really wonderful, you got a big Kool-Aid smile on your face. Uh-huh. Hit the share button. But time, you get a little bit of turbulence. <clears throat> mm. Time things don't go quite your way. Uh huh. Time life take a turn for you. Now you ain't happy no more. Now you don't have that joy, 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 joy down in your soul. You feel me? Now you can't smile no more. Now you mad with the whole world. Now you ready to give up on your God. The devil is a liar. Glory to God. The devil is a liar. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, I've been hit with a couple blows. <clears throat> for God I live, for God I die. I mean that. And guess what? Ain't nobody God but God. <clears throat> and if it ain't God, then it ain't God. And I'm going to serve him. Listen to me, people. I'm going to serve him until my last breath. I'm going to praise him until my last breath. Miss Jane, I'm going to give him all I got. I got one thing to give y'all, him church members, my him church family. I got one thing to give you. And that's my all. I ain't backing up. I ain't throwing in the towel. I ain't giving up. Man, this show ain't the hour to give up in this pandemic atmosphere. Where am I going? I ain't going. Where, where, where am I going, Virginia? Where, 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 where you going, Virginia? Where, 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 where you going? Where am I going? Back to the devil? Really? Really? Back to the clubs? Really? Back to the topless joints? Really? Back to the weed? Really? Back to the marrow, won't you? Really? <laughs> Back to the dope man? Really? Where am I going? Where am I going? I, I, I'm not going backwards. I'm not going to let the devil even think that he can punk me to go back to him. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm determined to go for, for God. I live for God. I mean that. And it has to be something you have to determine in your heart that you're going to go hard for God regardless. Yes, life may come. Yes, life may hit. Things may not go your way. You might lose somebody. Come on. Something that you love very, very dear may exit out of your life. Some of you have experienced that. I'm there with you. I understand that. But I'm not going to stop serving God. Amen. Come on, hit the share button. Some of you to get that because some of you some of you have let life hit. You still, I mean, you know, man, I, I pray that I get stronger every day. You know what I mean? My wife is gone. It's been one year, August 29th. I'm getting stronger. Thank you for your prayers. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Grieving is a real thing. You may grieve for a while, but I'm not going to act like, come on, that God ain't here. I'm not going to act like he doesn't exist. I'm not going to treat you bad. That's right. mm. Amen. I'm not going to treat you like you did something to me. Because right. some of you have lost things and things are going, now you're treating the whole world like they garbage. That's right. Now you can't even get yourself together. That's an excuse for you to treat people how you really want to treat them. Uh -huh. So I'm going to still be nice to people regardless. Praise That's God. Right. You know right. what I mean? I'm going to still let you know God's still God. How can he still preach like that when his wife done left? Because I understand the process of life that one of us had to die. One of us probably going to precede each other unless Jesus is going to come back and get us both. But we already had that planned out. Come on, we already had a life planned out. If baby, one of us exit each other, we're going to keep going on. They say, baby, what you going to do? Keep on keeping on, baby. Yeah, if I would have left past, he would have been up here preaching tonight. Keep on keeping on while Bishop in heaven. What, see, you got to go and determine what you're going to do before it happens, Miss Janie. You got to go and make up your mind, I'm going to do what I got to do for God anyway. See, I'm going to make up my mind tomorrow, I'm going to give him praise. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning because he wake me up, but not the alarm clock. When he shakes you, that angel, and you heard that alarm clock and get up, you got to already have in your mind, I'm going to give him praise. 
This is a new day. Glory be to God. And it's going to be a good day. Glory to God. You got to go ahead and determine what you're going to do before it shows up. God is good, man. God is the best thing that ever happened in my life. God is the best thing that probably happened to you and your family. And we can't let the devil be punking us with circumstance and give up on God. You know, there, there's something I believe that God would never give up on you. Don't you give up on him. Where are you going at? I mean, for real, where are you going at? The devil will eat your lunch. Some of you have been in this thing too long to be so sissified and wimpy. You, some of you too wimpy. Some of you too wimpy. Life hits, you always got complaining, always, always moaning about something. Man, get over yourself. Please, come on. Shake yourself. Come on now. God been too good to you. You have one little hiccup. One little stuff go wrong. Come on now. One thing. Some of you still got your husband and wife. What you really complaining about? Uh, let me say that again. Some of you got your husband and wife. You still living. What you complaining about? I'm just saying. Some of you ain't lost nobody. What you really complaining about? I ain't got what you really complaining about. Somebody will, somebody will gladly trade paces with you to have their people alive. You up there complaining about dumb old stuff. This dumb. No, not, not dumb. Dumb. This dumb out. Dumb out. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Hit the share button. I only got nine minutes left. I'm trying to get into my past so we can go ahead and blow some more fuses. Y'all know hit the share button. Bishop going off. And I ain't give you one scripture yet. Praise God. I gave y'all one. We're going to give you this. We're going to go. Amen. So look, y'all. Let's give this point. Because I don't want to get off the air. You said, Bishop ain't going over no scriptures. Uh, we gave you one already. But look, we're going to go over this uh, 26 reasons why you need to read the word. We'll probably give you one or two points real quick in the remaining, remaining because this is important. I've been telling you every week while we've been back on this, man, the word of God is all we got, y'all. For real, God is all we got. In this crazy atmosphere, I hope you go out and vote too. But whoever's going to be the next president, that, that might, whoever, whoever he or she may be or he may be, he may be, she may be. You know what I mean? It, it, it really still ain't going to matter. You know, it's going to matter, but it's not going to matter. And I'm saying that, I say that humbly because we have civic duties to do. We still got to do it. We still got to go out and vote. We need to do that. I tell you the price that people pay for us to vote. But at the end of the day, like at the end, end, end of the day, God's still going to have to take care of you. You know what I mean? He's, he's still going to make sure you're okay. God's going to make sure you're okay. So don't you fear, no matter what happens. Because they always talk about, you know, your, your current president, your current president in there, P45, or we're talking about hijacking the country if he lose, you know, all kind of foolishness, which is crazy. Which is crazy. That's not even civil. That's not even that's not even lined up with the with, with the Constitution. You know, you if you lose, then, then then pack your bags up and do like every other president and then go on about your life. But to trying to hijack the country and you know, calling the, the, the calling people, getting them ready to rally up and causing all kind of commotion and division in the country, I don't think is right. Personally, you know, we are a country that have come a long way from slavery, from the conception of this United States of America, and nobody's really trying to go back. We've made some great uh, strides to, to better ourselves as people, black, white, Hispanic, come on, Asians, especially the black-white relationship, you know, which has been very toxic over the years, and the history of slavery. We've been trying to move the country forward. People have been trying to heal, and it seemed like not being funny. You know, if you like P45, that's your business, but it seemed like up uh, under this president, up under this uh current administration, it seems like we've gone back, man, about 40, 50 years. Seriously, it just seems that way now. I may be wrong, but it seems like that with the temperament of people. You know, and any good leader, you know, a leader should always cause people to love and collaborate and try to put people together. A good leader is going to understand that he or she is the president of everybody. Not, not, not a certain group, not, not this group. He's the president or she's the president of the whole United States. These, they call, it's called United States, but we are more like divided states. You know what I mean? And, and it's so sad. You know, we are really a divided country. And it's so sad. It's so, so sad because the Bible says a house divided, it won't stand. That's the unfortunate part about our United States of America. In the end day, we won't be the power source, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Because we're so divided. We're so divided to party lines. And it, it is a really sad, sad, sad situation. And, I, and I'm so glad uh, that we have something beyond this United States of America called Kingdom of God, called Jesus. Come on. Come on, called God the Father called the heavens that's going one day the government going to be on his shoulder. I'm so happy we got something way beyond this natural system because it's broken. It, it, it's broke up. It said it broke. It broke. He broke. He broke. It broke up. He broke. He broke. It said he broke. He broke. He broke. It's broke. It's broken. You know, for real. And that's, that's not cliches. It's messed up because you got people unfortunately 
who don't have God's who don't have God's heart towards people. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that because you got people that don't care about people. How how can you how can you have the best health care coverage and you don't want the average man that's working to have health care for his family? How, how how can you have how can you be doing well? You don't want the next man to do uh, do well. You know what I mean? I mean it's like hey, you got you know any good leader want? I got stuff. I'm, I'm covered. I want your family covered too. You you know if you can give yourself a pay raise, you making you know. 200,000, 195, 167 a year, 150, and you give yourself five raises, you don't think the man that's working for $10 want to raise? You don't think he want to take his family on a nice vacation? You don't think he want a $20 raise? The minimum wage should be $20-something dollars? You know what I mean? Come on now. I mean, they, they want to take care of their families and, 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 and take vacations and be able to have money left over so they don't have to be stressed out monthly. Are you still paying people 7 and $6 an hour like they can survive off that? Can't you survive off that? See, we need to ask ourselves those questions as leaders Especially those that have the authority, come on, to make it better for somebody else. You live in, you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars a year, and, and and you want the average person not to even make five, ten, seven dollars an hour? That that's ludicrous. I mean, we we are people that I mean, everybody got you know different educational levels, and I think you know you need to be rewarded based on your you know your your accomplishments in life. But there need to be a base pay, you know, and nothing wrong with somebody having a base pay for fifteen or twenty dollars an hour, easy, minimum wage. Come on now. And then I think that the country needs to adjust the minimum wages based on life living because everything else go up, but your that's wages right. stay down. That's not right. That's just not right. That's not right for, for somebody, the president of that company, to be making all this money and then his people are suffering. His people can barely get the people through school. They got child care expense. They got gas. They got light. They got water. And then you wonder why they're on the edge. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes. Come on, you know, it's like people got... Their mind that stuck because they like they they trying to survive. They trying to not go off on somebody. Come on, not go postal, not go by low, not go piggly wiggly, <laughs> not, not, not go McDonald's, <laughs> not go Popeyes. You know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Them people, them people, yeah, not, them people, them people not, not trying to go circle K. I'm just saying them people trying to survive, man. You know, and, and then they, their minds are just trying to stay focused and they're trying to take all the little you're giving them and make it work. And it can be stressful on marriages. It can be stressful. Come on, with moms and dad, kids yelling for stuff, and you just trying to bring a pack of bologna in and mix it up with not the new van camp, but the old van camp. Some of y'all know the old van camp. They ain't talking about the sweet stuff. I'm talking about the old the stuff they used to put the sugar in it. The old van camp. You know what I mean? You got to cut up. If you had uh, a sausage meat or, or a beanie weenies or old, a, a, a pack of dollar bologna or a pack of dollar hot dogs to cut up in the thing and have rice to the side and make a meal out of it. That's what I'm saying. Trying to survive. You know what I mean? So, so my thing is, you know, if you're a leader and like myself here at this hymn church, you know, I want, I want my leadership to bless all people. No matter who come in here, no matter what color they are, I want this church and this community to be better for me as a leader. Now, I'm going to speak up when it's right. I'm going to speak up when it's wrong. I ain't, ain't going to be no punk and hold back and try to have some popularity contest about, you know, playing it safe and all that because I'm going to let people know how I feel. I love God's people. I love you, if you, no matter what color you are, but I think, again, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Praise God. You know what I mean? And then, then if you're right, you're right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak truth to power. I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be punked out by but what you can do. That's why I love my hymn church family because I truly, truly believe if, 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 the, if the story was rewritten, and if then and I'm, I'm going to say this, and if, if, if our church was in the hands of local bankers, I don't think that our outcome would be the same. Uh, because, our, because our church was not in the hands of local pharaoh, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't calling nobody evil, I'm just saying. That we, we were not in the, in the control of the, of the bankers that, that we, we, we had to do what they tell us to do. Yeah. So we were on our own as God was giving us instructions of what to do. Yeah, because I really believe our outcome would have been different if we were controlled by bankers right now. Y'all yeah, better hear what I'm saying. But because God says, son, don't go to the bank because I see a day coming where I need you to do what I, I need you to say what I need you to say. And I need you to preach what I want you to preach. And I don't need nobody calling you saying, uh, I need you to not preach that because I'm going to hold back your loan. But God knew that, son, you preach this gospel in season, out of season. You say exactly what I want you to say when I tell you to say it. You will love all people, but you also address when things are not right. And you won't be afraid to say it. You won't let this local government control you by a dollar because I'll make sure all God's people have enough dollars in this church to do everything that I called you to do. I'll make sure that I gather all the rejects. Come on. All the misfits of what the world calls us, 
all the people that's despised, rejected of men, all the people that the world don't want, and I'll pull them all together and I'll make something shine through them. I'll pull them all together and I'll cause something beautiful to happen, even in a little small town called Monk's Corner, South Carolina. And like Jesus, they said, what good thing could come out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina? I'll use a group of people and cause them to turn this city upside down for the glory of God. I'll use something obscure, something that nobody's looking at, and cause something beautiful to shine through. I'll use what the world would think that it won't happen here and make it all happen. Because God is God. Ain't nobody God but God. And if it ain't God, y'all, it ain't. Man, look, I am like slip rip out of time. But I got to give you the script. I'm out of time. I got to get, is it crazy? Yeah. One hour, gone. Wow. Yeah, let me give you the scripture because I didn't give you the scripture. I know it went off. Let me give you the scripture. <laughs> I, I know what you Let me give you the scripture. Somebody said, Bishop, I got to go look at this game. The game ain't on yet. Just hold your horses. <laughs> we at 10, 11. Come on, hold your horses. We got a little bit of a minute. Come on, let me give you this last scripture and we're going to get out of here. So let me give you this last point. Let me give you this last point for the day, for today, this morning, for this morning, this morning. <laughs> last point. It is the source of spiritual food. Write that down. It should be at the bottom of your screen. It is 26 reasons why you need to read the word. It is the source of spiritual food. My God, my God. And we're going to go to John 6 and 35. We'll close with that one. So reading the word it is a source. And that's why some of you need to understand. It wouldn't be pretty cool as much as you ate naturally that you eat the word spiritually. This thing, every time you put something in your mouth, you always read the scripture. That'd be pretty cool, right? You'd be powerful. Because some of you always, some of you like something in your mouth, you're always snacking. <laughs> you know, peanuts, some of you, always, I, you know, I got to have something. <laughs> yeah, so you get some little, little snack. I gotta, I'm snacky. You always snacky, praise God. But I'm just saying, wouldn't it be cool if you ate the word as much as you snack? Woo, yeah. you'd be powerful, I'm telling you. But anyway, but the spiritual food, we need this, we need to feast. We have a diet. I said this last week, and I believe this wholeheartedly. We need to always have a diet for the word. Always have a craving for something of the word. Every day of the week, you need to have something. I don't care if you read one scripture. I'm, I'm being funny. If you only read a proverb or read something to meditate on every day, to feed your spirit. You, feed, you see, the Bible is clear uh, that we don't live by bread alone. Come on, let's go to over to 6, uh, 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 635, John 635, real quick, and we'll conclude with this. So we need a diet. We need, we need to understand it's, it's, it's the source of spiritual food. You can't survive off of... Uh, 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 Junk, spiritual junk, and you can't survive not reading his word. And some of you are spiritual mal, 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 malnutrition. Mal, that's what called it, mal, malnutrition. Some of you are spiritually malnutrition because you don't eat the word. You, you, you dried up. You, you're sick. You're not doing well. And, and you don't eat natural. That's what happens, right? If you don't eat natural, then you become malnutrition, right? And so I believe some of you don't have a diet for the word, and that's why things are not going well in your life. Because you can't, you can't, you can't, you have all the money in the world, but you still, some people still want to go stand in front of a train. They have no spiritual malnutrition. Isn't that crazy? Have all the money in the world, and they still want to go kill themselves. That don't make sense to me, does it? Okay, let's worry about it. 6 and 35, let's hurry and read this. I know y'all ready to go look at the games and start getting your liquor and, you know, all your, your preseason joints and your hot dogs and hamburgers and wings. Come on, get ready and all your little celery and all that stuff. All right, so here verse 35 says this. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall what? Never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? I'm the bread of life. And that, that's powerful uh, that he says this. And, and it's beautiful um, that, that, he, that the scripture here is there. He says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Say amen. Look up, everybody, real quick. So here we understand eating his word. And then he says something in Matthew 4, 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, when he told Satan, you know, uh, Satan said, turn these bread, turn these stones to bread when he was in there, at, uh, the 40 days fasting. So he gave the devil something back at his face right there. Matthew 4, 4. I want to make sure that's right. I think that is the right scripture. I can't be throwing stuff out and not validate it. I think Matthew 4, 4. I did say that right. Matthew 4, 4. Let me make sure because I don't want to give you the wrong reference. Matthew 4, 4 says that, yes, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Right. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So here we need to understand in closing. This, right here, the word, y'all, look, get the Bible. Then, matter of fact, some of you, for Christmas this year, Christmas coming up in December, I want you to go get yourself an early Christmas present. Some of you have your own Bible. And I know that sounds crazy, but some of you don't. Um, I have my Bible here. I love this Bible. I have several Bibles as, as a pastor, I should. And, uh, but I love my Bible. I love the word. Some of you don't have your own Bible. Some of you got that Gideon Bible. Nothing wrong with that. Some of you took the Bible out of the hotel, 
I'm just saying, you know, you need your own Bible. <laughs> you know, it's some some of you sad because you don't have. So, Bishop, I got it on my phone. That's good. Yeah. But I, I'm, I, I, this is what I want you to do. Listen to your bishop. I want you to go buy a Bible, a physical Bible, because I don't want you to have never excuses. If you see that internet go out, you already done. Yeah, right. It's up. Well, I can look at it online. What if your phone crashes? You know, what if your phone get lost? You ain't gonna read the Bible for two days. I'm just saying, go get a physical Bible. And I want you to invest in that. It don't have to be expensive, but something nice, something that, that's, that's, you know, what, what kind? You got all kind of message. You got, yeah. you know, your NIV, your NLT, you know. Uh, Google which one might be the best. I don't, I'm not telling you what to get amplified. You got, you know, the different versions, you know what I'm saying? The American Standard Version. Get something yeah. that's easy reading. That's going to be, when you read it, you can take all the this is the thou is in the, the is written in the Elizabeth. So you can take all that out and it can just like be a smooth read as like you and I are talking. Because I want you to get into this. Why is this important? This is my spiritual food. You know why I don't have to go out and be crazy uh, by November the 4th when they vote whoever becomes the president of the United States? Because God is my king. Amen. Amen. You know, I, don't have to, I don't have to lose it. Even, even uh, you know, I, I share this because, you know, you know, last four years, man, when, when the other president got in, uh, you know, the country was like, it was just crazy going on the country. And it's still crazy going on. Uh, but I mean, just God told me way back then, four years ago, uh, told me, uh, it had to calm my spirit because, you know, the, the guy that, that's elected was not my choice of candidate at the time. And, 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 and anyway, I ain't tell you who to vote for now. <laughs> ain't nothing changed, you know, anyway, in my mind. Because you know, the guy just need anyway. Uh, so anyway, look, yeah. go out and vote. I ain't telling you who I'm voting for and all that, but I'm just saying he wasn't my candidate four years ago. And I don't mind sharing that he just wasn't. And um, uh, so, so based on some stuff, you know, I just studied and, and read on, I just, this wasn't my choice of candidate. So anyway. But he told me four years ago, God told me, he said, look, son, I'm still God. I'm still God. I I'm still going to be God. I'm still going to bless you. And God knows, my him church members, when God told us that he was going to do some stuff in these four years, and he ain't did it because the president put something in our pocket. He, it wasn't because, you know, it, no, God did it to show us, I don't care who in this chair. I don't care who in the White House, your house, and our house. I'm going to bless you because I got a covenant with you. Yeah. Now, that's what I'm saying. So, so I, don't want you, I, don't want us, I want us to go do our civil duties. Yeah. Then I want us to get too focused on the fact that, you know, it's like, you know, you're going to eat still and you're going to live good regardless of who in the chair. Yeah. Because that's been the way of the chosen people. God have always taken care of his people. I don't care if your shoes got to grow in the wilderness. I don't care if he got to feed you with manna from heaven. I don't care what he got to do. Quails got to come out the sky and fall on the ground for you to skin them. I'm just saying. He is going to take good care of his people. So don't you panic. Don't you worry. Don't you get thrown to a frenzy like the world to act like God ain't going to be there with your, your family regardless of who gets in the chair. Because regardless of who in the chair, it's still going to take God to take care of you. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to take God. Come on, hit the share button real quick. I'm not going yet. It's going to take God to take care of you and your family. Don't you panic. Don't you get in no fear. Just go out and do your civic duty. Vote who you think is best, who's going to work best for your cause. And, uh, and don't you fear a panic that everything's not going to work out for you and your family. It's going to work out beautifully. We got the church paid off. Come on, four years, we done had a whole lot of stuff that happened. And it wasn't because our president came and put anything in our pocket. I'm just saying. I'm just speaking now. It is because God kept blessing his people. <clears throat> some of you lived better. Some of you some of you done some amazing things. When we thought that, hey, but God was with us. And God going to continue to be with us. It don't matter. So I don't want you to panic. Go out and vote. Go out and vote, do your thing, but God's still going to be with us. <clears throat> Doesn't matter who come, who go, <clears throat> who get in the chair, who take on, who going to continue, whatever, I don't know. God still going to bless you, child of God. And we can give God praise for that. Come on, he can still gonna look out for your family. <clears throat> Fear not, for I'm with you. He's going to always be with us. Now I need you to put that in your spirit because that's in the word. I'm not going to fear who's going to get in that chair. I know that God going to take care of me and my family. Hey, y'all, look, my time has been well spent. I pray that you learned something that they got to uh, a scripture there. Uh, one, at least one, you know, like we may be on this to November. I don't know, Miss Jane, like, like kind of moving in that direction. I ain't trying to drag it out. But one thing I am trying to do, I just want us to flow always with what God is saying. Hey, look, if you real quickly bow your heads, want to say a quick prayer, salvation prayer. Uh, for those that do not do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, our, our, our goal here, we want you connected to a personal relationship with the Lord. So while you're there looking at your technical device, listening at least, come on, say, Dear Heavenly Father, 
I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for this moment giving me an opportunity to receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. I realize that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I repent of my sins one by one, each one never to return to my past. You said in your word that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I receive salvation now in Jesus' name. I am now your child, and I will, from this day forward, live for you. In Jesus' name, come on, give God a hand clap of shout. Come on, y'all, shout for him right there. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. And so we thank God. We thank God that we are, we are, you have the opportunity to, to receive him as Lord and Savior, and you are now a part of one of the best families. That's what I'm saying. See, this world got a system, and they, you know, this is party and that party. Man, we are part, children of God, we are part of the best system of this world. We are part of the kingdom of God. And guess what, y'all? If it never goes down, down here for you, you got a mansion being built in heaven. You got great stuff on the way. For, I mean, you got so many wonderful things to look forward to. So don't let this be your, you know, like I said, we, 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 know, we don't have a ticket here to park here forever. I don't have a parking uh, uh, license to park here in this earth forever, and it's not a permanent parking space for me. You know what I mean? So just understand, God got us. Your future is bright. And you're still going to live good while you're down here. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? But, don't, but this, 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 this is just one dimension to your life. Because you got heaven to look forward to. you got your blessings. you got the future. you got a lot of things to look forward to. So understand, God got you in every way. Hey, look, real quickly, thank you for those uh, this upcoming week. We have, um, uh, we have a uh, uh, anniversary coming up. We have an anniversary coming up. Come on, good God, a hand clap. We have an anniversary coming up. And, uh, and so we are excited. Come on about Pastor Otis Gordon. Uh, I think the anniversary starts on the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, October 14th, 15th, 16th. Uh, Pastor OG, Otis Gordon, who's going to be declaring. Of course, it's going to be virtuous. Not, don't come here physically. I know nobody's going to be here. I'm saying don't come here physically. That's going to be online, virtual service online. Uh, celebrate 21 years. Of course, y'all uh, showing me some love of my, for our anniversary. Of course, this whole month of October is actually clergy appreciation for those that are not uh, connected to this church. If you connect to another church, show your pastor some love. But anyway, it's our pastor's anniversary. So again, I'm, I'm grateful for, for my buddy, Pastor OG. He's going to be preaching on the 14th. And then I have my, my good buddy, uh, Pastor uh, Apostle, excuse me, Charlie Reddish, who's going to be preaching uh, all the way from North Charleston. Both of these guys from North Charleston, South Carolina. Yes. He's going to be preaching on that Thursday, which is the 15th of October. And then on the 16th, I have my own, my one and only, amen, spiritual daddy. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all. My one and only spiritual daddy, Archbishop Leonard David Love, who's going to be declaring the word on that Friday. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that, that these men of God, whom I love all these guys, especially, you know, my spiritual dad, my, my dude, Pastor Reggie, all good friends of mine. I mean, I mean, these guys are like real top best friends of mine. So I thank God for these men of God that love me, love our family, love our church family. And, of course, Saturday, y'all, we having a, a drive through. Come on, y'all. Yeah, y'all, we having a drive through. Uh, just to come and wave at the bishop. Uh, you know, we, we ain't getting out of cars now because don't, don't violate because we'll have folks to throw you back in the car now. And just stay in the car, wave, and, and keep it going. Those that want to show me some love. Now, look, I need a big, big favor because I only have limited books. I really don't, I don't have a whole lot of books. So if you want a book signed by me that day, I need you to hit me up on my cell or go online and go ahead and order it. Uh, don't worry about hitting me on my cell. Go to J, don't worry about it, forget that. J, don't worry about hitting me myself. Listen to my instructions. JAlexanderTaylor.com. Go on the website and place your order. So when you come around, your book will already be pre-signed uh, by me with your name ready to be handed to you. If you want a book, amen. If you want a book, if you don't, cool beans, not a problem. Uh, I, I, but I want to be a blessing. Uh, I want you to be a blessing to me. And I also want to bless you by putting my signature on it uh, before you get in the line uh, that day. So if you go to J. AlexanderTaylor.com and order the books so that when you come 
through the parade, we can have your book ready to give to you on that day. And I appreciate it. All the proceeds, again, uh, I'm donating my first proceeds uh, to the church. Uh, I'm giving that towards a church parking lot. Actually, the Lord told me to do that, and I want to do that to be a blessing to my church family. And uh, so I'm excited for all the sales uh, that has happened, those that have ordered uh, the book. I appreciate it. Appreciate the love. And if you haven't ordered, you need to order the book. Yeah. Bitch, what can I do for you? Order the books. Praise yeah. God. And also the music. I hope you've been vibing to the music. Somebody said, I'm really loving the music. Hey, look, the music, Amazon.com, also iTunes.com, and uh, again, Spotify, I, uh, YouTube, and all that. You can listen to it for free. Uh, but don't listen to this for free. I want you to get it. Get it, get it, get it. It's not that deep. It's only a dollar. If you like just one song, get a dollar song, whatever. Download the music. This is your bishop. This is, this is iconic. This is, this is like some serious historical stuff. Your bishop, man, with the music, volume one and two, and you don't have it? Come on. And you don't spend $10 for food? You don't have your bishop? Spiritual? I'm talking about the music will bless you. No, the music will bless you. I, somebody hit me up and said, you know what? I kept listening to the songs over and over and over, and I'm really loving it. It's like, it's like candy. It's like ear candy. The more you listen, the more you're going to love it, I'm telling you. And it's going to do something to you because it's going to keep speaking your spirit. I'm serious. It's wonderful. Not because I did it. I'm telling you, God, God is good. That's all I can say. Look, y'all know what to do. Hey, those that are giving tithe offerings, gifts of love, we appreciate you. Some of you are sewing into my anniversary. Thanks so very much. I also need to make sure that uh, you have the Zelle information. Uh, my media team, I think they've already put that on there. The Zelle information should be on there. And so we need, uh, it's, it's actually uh, Zelle, also some given by Cash App or Zelle. Zelle is bishopjerometaylor.com uh, or Zelle, my phone number. My, you know, some of you know my, my, my cell phone number, so uh, just type my cell phone number and it'll make sure my gifts of love that you're going to be sowing to my life comes to me uh, outside of Cash App because Cash App is good, but it's kind of, you know, got scammers. It's got some stuff. You still can do Cash App. It's been safe for me, but it's still got stuff going on with it, but Anyway, uh, if you want to give, you know, you can give those means. And again, thank you for all that you're doing uh, to make this anniversary a very special one. Uh, and to my hymn church members, you know I love y'all. Uh, I appreciate you. Whatever you're going to do for your bishop, I'm grateful. You know how we do it every year. Ain't nothing new. Whatever you want to do for me, I appreciate it. This is how I eat. This is how, I, you know, this is how your bishop put the chapstick on his lip. <laughs> you know, this is what I do. Amen. And I'm grateful. I'm real grateful for uh, even in this pandem pandemic atmosphere that you're still able to sow into my life and take care of me and my family. So I appreciate it. And those that are looking on, giving tithe offerings of gifts of love, don't forget about your men of God. Don't forget about your man of God. Don't, 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 don't forsake to be a blessing to somebody as God will continue to bless your family. And that's the way of God. The way of God, the order of God is to sow. And as you sow, your life will be blessed. And some of you know that collectively, all of you doing what you do at one time brings in what you do for me. You know what I mean? So it's not like we ask you to do the whole total. Just do your part. And watch God bless you. Don't ever be afraid to sow into your man of God's life. I'm a blessed man today because I sow into my men and women of God's life. Bishop, how you get so blessed? I sow. Some of you, some of you can't even hang with me sowing. I, I run circles around you sowing. I sow. I, I sow for real, for real. But some of you need to learn how to be better sowers. You, you know, one day you're going to be a pastor. One day you're going to be in that seat and you're going to want people to sow. You don't want to be a poor sower. You want to be a great tither and a great sower. Learn how to sacrifice sometimes. That's what it's about. Because sometimes you want, again, it's, it's about where you're going. You don't want to be, you know, like just pinching and sometimes take that sacrifice. Some of, some of us, I learned this that are tuned in. I'm getting ready to go off the air. We sacrifice for what we want. And grown people make happen what they want to make happen. Yeah. Don't ever forget one day you may be in the driver's seat as the leader of your organization, of your church. And you, you understand better then when God got your full-time ministry. You understand it a whole lot better. And so I'm always constantly showing to my men of God because that's what, that's what all this happened. 21 years has not been because I've been wealthy by myself. It's been because of the grace of God and the sowing mechanism. Hey, y'all, I love y'all. Check out the books, the CDs, all that stuff. Tune in this week, y'all. It's going down for, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and of course, the information will be on the screen uh, after we go off the air, uh, play through the screen of the anniversary and all that in the, uh, the drive-through on Saturday. I love y'all so very much. I appreciate y'all. Let's continue to go strong. Let's continue to do what God has called us to, to do here in the beautiful voluptuous town of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Hey, remember these words from Acts chapter 17 and verse number 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. And by the way, all about him.
Thank you.